fellow nationalists. This is a crucial moment in the history of the British National Party and the history of the struggle to save our people and our nation. We've made tremendous strides, especially with the breakthrough in the European elections. In many ways, we're only just now beginning to see what that breakthrough is going to mean. Things such as uh, finally having me on question time, creating, there's going to be an enormous amount of liberal hysteria about that and there's going to be more things which make it clear that we now have entered the mainstream. But make no mistake, our opponents are absolutely determined. They are frantic with their effort to drive us back and to drive us out. We've seen the, the red, white and blue, uh, a greater level of violent opposition against us uh, than really ever before. Uh, we, for instance, lost our conference venue for this uh, November in Blackpool, uh, a combination of the, the far left and the council have simply closed it down. Now the good news is we have another venue. The conference will go ahead, come what may. Important decisions will be made at that conference. But the fact that a democratic political party, which has made this enormous breakthrough despite all the odds, can be denied conference facilities really shows just what we're up against. People working with us as contractors are right now losing their bank accounts because of pressure mainly from the Islamists on the banks and then on to people just because they do business with the British National Party. We have two activists at present over the next few weeks coming up in court in Liverpool and in Preston. We have uh, Adam Walker uh, back up in front of the General Teaching Council really just for being a member of the British National Party in a couple of weeks time. This constant pressure against us. But of course worst of all and most, most dangerous of all is the continued attack from the Commission for Equality and Human Rights. And make no mistake they are not aiming these people just to push us back. They are trying to destroy the British National Party on two levels. The first is that they believe that by imposing on us something that their way of running things, by denying us the rights which we believe we hold abs have absolutely to associate with those with whom we want and not to associate with those we don't want, we believe that's a human right of all indigenous peoples and in this country we are the indigenous people. Our ancestors fought for this country. We have certain special rights here and they believe that by taking those rights away that firstly they would cause us to fight amongst ourselves, to argue amongst ourselves, to tear ourselves apart and I can tell you now we are not going to. This party is more united right now than at any point in the last ten years because the more they put pressure on us from the outside the more we realize that even though occasionally we may have minor differences about policy or the way forward in the end faced with those attacks we're brothers and we stand shoulder by shoulder so this is a united party there's no risk no threat there at all but the second aim of the Equalities Commission is to destroy us financially and now I've dispensed uh, the well, the last three hours with the lawyers. We've hired the very best lawyers that money can buy and I believe, believe you me, that means a lot of money. Top solicitors, top QCs. We are aiming, we're going to have to change our constitution but we are determined to ensure that we remain here for our people, for the indigenous of this country and we're determined to ensure that our constitution once changed is future-proofed so they can't bleed us to death by coming after us again and again and again. But this process isn't yet finished. We've got two and a half weeks to uh, complete the process that we need to do before we run out of the deadline which the court and the Commission have set us and I'm not going to reveal our strategy but in those two and a half weeks we have to be meeting the lawyers again and again and again and it's expensive. These people, they have a great deal of goodwill to us but in the end they've got a, uh, a requirement from the partners and so on, the other people in the firm, they have to see the colour of their money or they will stop acting for us. And if they stop acting for us now we will be left with the worst of all worlds in terms of the costs that are already there hanging around in this case but not having finished the job and we need to finish the job. I hate coming on here asking for money and that's why I'm here to ask you to help us right now to fight this case because it's not just about the British National Party and our rights 
in the British National Party. This attack by the Equalities Commission isn't just against us, it's on the very concept that there is such a thing as an indigenous British population. Something which is rolled out as of right to every other people under the sun, they seek to deny us, not just us, but every person of our blood in this country, they seek to not deny us the right. Their forms talk about you know, white British and so on, they, on their in their forms, they recognise that we're something. But what they're saying to the courts, what they're trying to push through, is the idea that there is no such thing as indigenous British. English, Scots, Irish, Welsh, we simply do not exist. We're fighting to make sure that that does not, by default, come into law. We're fighting not just for our rights. If the Equality Commission get away with this attack on us, where they're acting effectively, or trying to act, not only as judge and jury, but also executioner. If they can do this against us, later on they'll move against various Christian groups, for example, because they have certain areas in which they want to discriminate you know, in favour of people who uphold certain values and against people who don't hold by our values. So we're only the first. If they break us, they'll move on to other people. We're in the front line and it's expensive here in the front line. It's hard work here in the front line. And I need you, your help. If you look at the box below this video, you'll see that there are four different ways in which you, right now, can help the British National Party. I know there are some of you who've done all four of them already, in which case, many thanks, you can rest on your laurels. But those who haven't, take a look at those four. Take a look at your children, your grandchildren, the kids like you, like your kids, playing in the park. Think about the future of this country, the freedoms, everything that so many have fought and died for to create and to preserve and uphold and understand that right now we, the British National Party, together, we're the only thing standing for those values and against their complete destruction. Look at those four things below this box. Please decide right now which one of them you're going to do and be absolutely involved in this historic, this heroic struggle for the future of our people in our country.